I'm Leo and welcome to this video on setting up a company in the UK. For the purpose of this video, I use an example fictional client who's come to us as many of our regular clients do, as a referral. Gina would like our assistance setting up her new business venture, Streamza. Streamza is an app which collates information about a user's movie and TV preferences and then uses that to recommend the best streaming package for them. A question we sometimes ask our clients is whether they should start their business as a private limited company or as another business vehicle. There are many different types of business vehicle in the UK, but the main ones are a sole trader, a partnership or limited liability partnership, or a private limited company. Most of our clients opt for a private limited company, and the reasons why will become clear shortly, but I will first chat about the other two. Setting up as a sole trader might seem like a really attractive option because there's little red tape, and this means that Gina could get streams that are up and running quite quickly. However, the main disadvantage of operating as a sole trader is that there is personal liability. That means that if streams that fail to facilitate business debts, Gina's house or car could be used to do so. Gina could obtain insurance, but that won't cover all of her personal liability. The other disadvantage of operating as a sole trader is that it's not the most credible vehicle for investment and, like many tech companies, Gina would like to secure funds in the future, and so we wouldn't recommend that she proceeds as a sole trader in this instance. A partnership or limited liability partnership is most commonly used for groups of professionals, such as accountants, solicitors, architects and so on, or for one-off joint venture projects. In a regular partnership, there is personal liability, but that's not the case in limited liability partnership. In both types of partnership, there isn't a great structure for investment, and so again, that wouldn't be suitable here. A private limited company is a company that's incorporated a company's house with shareholders and directors. Its shareholding structure means that it's easy for investment, and the fact that it's private means that those shares aren't traded on the public stock market. It's also limited, and so Gina's personal assets won't be at risk here. We would always recommend that our clients seek advice from an accountant before setting up their business, because there can be tax implications, and sometimes a limited liability partnership is more advantageous from a tax perspective. However, in this instance, we'll proceed on the basis that Gina would like to incorporate her company as a private limited company. A company has a separate legal personality, and that means that Gina won't be entering into contracts, employing staff, or incurring liabilities. Streams are limited will be. Shareholders are the owners of the company, and they have certain economic rights, such as entitlement to a dividend if one's distributed, and a percentage of the sale proceeds if the business is sold in the future. Shareholders also have some really key decision-making rights, and this can include appointing and removing directors, and also changing the company's constitution. Directors are responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the company and make most of the important decisions. They have responsibilities under the Companies Act 2006, and they can be personally liable if these are breached. An example of one of these is the duty to act in the best interest of the company. Gina could set up her business and be the sole shareholder and the sole director, but she has a friend from university, Han, with a lot of experience in marketing apps and so she'd like to bring him on board as a director and a 20% shareholder. We don't normally recommend that founders issue shares to other founders or employees unless they have a set of terms regulating that relationship. This is because disagreements can arise between shareholders that can cause difficulties, and also a shareholder might want to leave and the other might struggle to claw back their shares. Gina and Han have made an agreement with these key terms in place, and we'll explore this in our next video on shareholders' agreements. So if Streamza was incorporated with 100 shares of £1 each, Gina will hold 80 of those shares and her personal liability will be limited to the £80 she paid for those shares. This is the same for Han with his £20 and his 20 shares. A company can be incorporated on Company's House online for a fee of £12. It's relatively straightforward and so Gina could make the application herself. However, she's instructed us to do so on her behalf. We'll also prepare the statutory books for the company, and this is registers of information, such as the directors, secretaries, persons with significant control, and so on. 
when incorporating a company, articles must be provided. Articles of Association are the constitution of the company and set out how it's run. For example, how the company might make decisions and how the shareholders will transfer shares and what will happen. Mod articles can be used from the Companies Act 2006, but we sometimes find that these model articles have some unhelpful provisions and so it's more common for us to provide amended or bespoke articles for our clients. Articles can be changed with a shareholder resolution with the consent of 75 of those holding 75% or more of the shares in the company. This is called a special resolution. As Gina holds 80% of the shares, she'll be able to make changes to the constitution in the future. And so she's going to use mod articles for the moment. Note that articles are available online and can be seen publicly, and therefore no confidential information should be included. So to summarise, we would advise Gina on the different types of business vehicles and set up streams at a private limited company or company's house. Gina is a director and 80% shareholder, and Han is also a director and holds the remaining 20% of shares. There's an agreement regulating Gina and Han's relationship and how they run the company, and we'll address this further in our next video on shareholders agreements. Thank you.